Hello my soccer universe. We had a quite a memorable start to the round of 16. Memorable, not necessarily great. And as a fan of the Italians and an anti-fan of the Germans, although all of these things have leveled over time, it did not go my way at all. But that doesn't mean the results were not the deserved and the right results, because they absolutely were. We'll talk about that, of course. I think the biggest story almost was the weather delay. No, no, it was not. It was the abject performance by the Squadra Azzurra. And we'll spend a little bit of time on that as well. But before that, Jersey matchup bingo. I published my picks for the round of 16 just yesterday. And of course, I got one wrong and it was, of course, Italy. I didn't dislike that Italy were playing in blue. I really thought that given previous evidence that UEFA will force the Italians to play in all white and I think those ugly uniforms would have matched the performance way better than the blue one but hey so we go. And then I wondered why couldn't they play with white pants? I think it would not have detracted from the look at all. Color blocking doesn't work. Same thing I really mourn I got the jerseys right for the Germany Denmark game. That was not hard but that they played again all white against all red. That was disappointing, I gotta say. Speaking of disappointment, let's start right in Berlin with this abject performance of Italy in their round of 16 matchup with Switzerland. And I don't wanna take away anything from Switzerland. Switzerland did what they do best. And Switzerland is a side that meanwhile I'm thinking, I don't really wanna face them because they are super solid in the back, they have some Real good class players, especially you know, you have Sommer on the back, you have Akanji in defense, and you have Granit Xhaka. That's an axis that can bring you far. Granit Xhaka had a wonderful game, and then up front, you have so much variety with, with, with the strikers. And as soon as Switzerland take the lead, they know how to defend well. They looked more Italian than the Italians. I said it in my short video, it might have said Italy on the shirt, but there was no Italy in them. And case in point, were the two goals. Remo Freuler takes the pass of Vargas. He even slightly miscontrolled, but has enough time to let it bounce and then take it out of the air and put it into the net. With no Italian even closing him down. And the same thing then for the second goal right after the half, where Vargas has ample of space, no Italian coming to close him down, to put a beautiful shot in the upper corner, killing the game off. But what is really so damning is that the Italians don't do any Italian things. Yes, Spalletti wants to play out from the back and wants to play attractive, but the basics need to be there and the basics is to defend well, to be close to your opponent, to be aggressive. Italy were bloodless. And don't give me the excuse, Signore Spalletti, that it was hot. Because Italy is a hot country. Switzerland, they're mountain folk. Yes, it can also get hot in Switzerland, uh, but you know, I don't want to play too much into stereotypes, but this was just one of the most stupid excuses I've ever heard. So yeah, first half was especially bad. I mean, the second half, the game was done at the moment it started, but the first half was especially bad because whatever the Swiss try to do, you could see there is a plan. They know what to do. They know how, 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 how to play. It all made sense. And whatever the Italians were doing, I mean, the only chances came by chips over the defensive line that did not work out that well because those are real hard passes. And then also, if Spalletti is complaining about missing speed, why are you playing Darmian, for instance? I mean, you pull out the lineup, yes, the brightest player of the tournament, Calafiori, was suspended. That surely didn't help. But Mancini, Darmian, give me an effing break, honestly. It is... What really annoys me with this Italy team that I think there is only one world class player in there in Donnarumma and we know that he's not perfect. I think with Barella and now Calafiori you have some really good players. Chiesa has not been up to snuff. Chiesa was the best player of Italy at the last Euros. Since then Chiesa has not been showing the promise that he has. And yes, there's a whole lot of soul searching that needs to be done for Italy. This was very much one-sided. It was maybe not as bad as Spain against Italy, where Italy escaped with a 1-0. But Switzerland, if they would have won this by 3 or 4, this would have been deserved. And as I said, this is a Swiss side that I think can go deep. I was not riding high on Switzerland ahead of the Euros, but then already the first performance against Hungary showed me, yeah, there is something there. They almost beat Germany, they comfortably beat Italy, and should they play England now, which they most likely will, I think this is gonna be a tight one. This is gonna be a really tight one. And the Switzerland team is also really hard to beat. 
I mean, yes, they play out a ton of draws, but they are really, really hard to beat. And they're also they're beating Italy for the first time in 31 years. Back then, this was a sensation that Switzerland beat Italy. So yeah, absolutely amazing stuff that the Swiss are doing. And I have them as an outside pick for a semi-final, if not a final. The bracket is working out for them. And you know, England need to show something better. Other than that, I think Switzerland can really get to the English, just putting it that way. So hope Schwitz in that one. And now to the more exciting game, which was definitely Germany's game against Denmark, which was both. It was a much tighter game than the 2-0 scoreline would suggest. But I also think it was a very deserved win by the Germans who came out flying put pressure on Denmark who you know Denmark came out group C the coma group where you know still kind of kind of sleeping in Germany for the first 15-20 minutes all over Denmark even scoring a goal through Schlotterbeck however there's a block that was the given as a foul I think it was all right but it would have set off this game in a completely different direction but Denmark found their way back into the game even creating chances themselves and uh, that was a really good one by Hoyland in there and a few more there were dangerous plays where Germany was then kind of a little bit on the back foot. And just when you thought that Germany is completely losing control of the game, there was a thunderclap and Michael Oliver, who, let's put it that way, did not maybe have the best of games for the simple reason that I think in doubt, he was always slightly favoring Germans. There was always kind of the hint that the Germans are getting a little bit the rub of the green there, but you know, don't want to say too much about him. Thunderclap coming right next to the stadium and then the skies opened the players had been taken off the field so much water hail coming down that you know the dortmund there were waterfalls coming down that two danish fans of course took for a nice bath it was eerie scenes it took a half hour for it all to be passed and the game to be restarted right off the start kai havertz had a free header that michael saved but then also again denmark had a good chance as well so the game was really 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 tight and it really turned early in the second half and Joachim Andersen being the tragic hero there because first he thought he had scored the go-ahead goal for Denmark which would not have been totally undeserved at that point and really would have put this Germany team under pressure however in the build-up it's just the tip of the toe of Michael Delaney was offside just by a hair and it remained by a hair because just uh, two minutes later there's a cross in and again, Joachim Andersen, he is in the run, he has the hand out and it just touches the tip of the finger. But you can see it on the little EKG diagram that they have now for the ball that there was a hand play and that it's a hands penalty. So two VAR decisions in a very short period of time all going against Denmark. And yes, by the letter of the law, they're the correct decisions. I'm not contesting that. However, if you're Danish, you probably will feel hard done by with either of these. And then the way Kai Havertz converts the penalty, that was pretty awesome, I gotta say. I love penalties that just go behind the post because there's no way that the goalie can get in there. Germany off and running and then of course Denmark has to come out and Germany had ample space, ample of counter-attacks. Kai Havertz missing two of these, I think one of them would have been offside where Schmeichel just gets a hand on it. And then Schlotterbeck plays a long ball to Musiala who with one touch controls it and with the other one puts it into the net. 68th minute, the game is done. Yes, Denmark were trying, but at that moment then Germany had full control of the game and probably should have won it by even higher scoreline. One that would not have reflected how this game felt, but this was a steep test for the Germans that everyone kind of expected because Denmark is a solid team as well. Way more solid than the Italians. And now with this win, Germany are not only top of the table for the favorites, by the pure fact that they're already on to the next round. But they're also waiting now for the win of Spain against Georgia. And I'm all for it. I think this will be Spain. Spain against Germany is something that I really want to see because this will be the test. This will be the test for both of these teams if they want to go forward. I think both have the potential to win it all. Spain don't have to be been the better team. So yeah, today's games, of course, we first have England against Slovakia. I'm fearing for a snooze fest there again. Please, England, for once, show up. And then we're Spain against Georgia, where I expect quite some goals. In any case, please let me know your thoughts on the games today. And, of course, the games yesterday. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye.
Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!